Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're using a Raspberry Pi 4 to search and identify common household objects and commonplace animals all in real time. And I'll show you how to build one in your own Makerverse. We're going to be using a trained library, which is going to enable our Raspberry Pi in combination with a Pi camera to identify 91 unique objects and animals in real time whilst providing an updating confidence rating. Later on in the video, I'm also going to refine the identification so it searches only for particular desired targets. With that in the bag, we're going to take this to the next step and demonstrate how you can make the Raspberry Pi control physical hardware through the GPIO whenever it identifies that particular target. This will be the second foray into the OpenCV landscape with Raspberry Pi and facial recognition being the first, link down below to that. Having the tools to solve real-time computer vision problems has never been more accessible. So let's jump in. On the table is all the components you will need to get this system up and running real fast. You're gonna need a Raspberry Pi official camera, module V2, or you could optionally use the Raspberry Pi high quality camera a micro SD card flashed with Raspberry Pi OS, a power supply. Naturally, you're also gonna want a HDMI cord, a mouse, a keyboard, and a monitor to connect it all to. I'm also using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, four gigabytes for this setup as having the extra computing power that comes with a Raspberry Pi 4 is a must for this kind of application. Once you power up the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna see the desktop booted up, and from here, you can connect it to the internet. Next. Open the Raspberry Pi configuration menu found by using the top left menu and scrolling over preferences and make sure the camera found under the interfaces tab is enabled. If you had to enable this setting, go ahead and reset the Raspberry Pi so the changes can take effect. Having done this, it's time to install OpenCV to Raspberry Pi. And this software provides us a huge resource to help us solve those real time computer vision and imaging processing problems that we're gonna be encountering. This is a series of terminal commands that will take some time to complete. It is a good opportunity to have some cups of tea as you work through the process. Every terminal command to do this is found on the written article, so all you need to do is copy and paste each line. With that complete, you will have OpenCV installed onto a fresh version of Raspberry Pi OS. And once that is complete, the very next step is to download the zip file found at the bottom of my article page and unzip the contents into the desktop. It is important that it goes in this directory as this is where the Python code will be searching for to get data about the object's name and also to get data from the trained library. The COCO, Common Object in Context Library, is a large scale object detection, segmentation, and captioning data set. This trained COCO library is how the Raspberry Pi will know what certain animals and certain objects generally look like. You can find pre-trained libraries for all manner of objects and animals and even sounds. So if this particular library here does not suit your needs, you can find many others freely accessible online. So with that, all the setting up is done. So grab yourself some props like I have here, a mouse, a cup, a keyboard, and let's jump right in and run that code. The first code you're gonna start with is objectident.py and you're gonna open it up by right-clicking it and opening it with either Thonny or Jenny. Both are just Python language interpreter softwares. As soon as you press play, you're gonna see a window open up showing a live feed of exactly what the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B is singing through the official high quality Raspberry Pi camera. Whenever it sees an object it knows, it's gonna draw a green box around it, as well as give it a label and a confidence rating. If it sees multiple objects that it knows, it's gonna be creating multiple boxes and labels. It's awesome, hey? It's honestly incredible how clever this little tiny Raspberry Pi can be. Running this code continuously gets the Raspberry Pi really hot, so definitely a good idea to provide it with some kind of cooling. Jumping back into the code, a value worth tinkering with is the threshold percentage value, which you can find right here. Increasing this means the software will only draw a box around an object when it has a high confidence factor and is absolutely sure that it has identified the object correctly. Another option worth tinkering with is the NMS percentage value, which you can find here. Increasing this will limit the amount of simultaneously identified objects. It is immensely valuable to be able to look for just one object and ignore all the other objects. That way, for example, you can count how many cups seen during a day, but not how many humans are holding those cups. This is also a very useful way to make the Raspberry Pi run the live preview window with a higher frame rate. But hey, what if you wanted to identify a cup and a horse and only those two things? Well, you're gonna edit that line in this manner. Then. Once you save the code and press play, it's gonna do just as you desired. We can do so many things with this code now. Simply, let's start by jumping into the folders and opening up 
object identify 3py with a Python editor. In this file, I've added just a few lines of code to the original code so that every time a particular target is seen, it's going to send out signals via the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. It's going to be commanded to rotate whenever the Raspberry Pi system sees a cup. If anything else is seen, it's not going to do anything. All the code I'm going to be adding here is completely explained in the guide controlling standard servos with the Raspberry Pi, link down below in the description. And so with my cup and servo in hand, let's run this system. And as soon as I show the camera the cup, boom, we have rotation. There is just so much potential with this software to take projects to amazing places. Big thanks goes to the OpenCV and Coco teams that work on this amazing software, which lets things like this happen. So that's it for today. Until next time, stay cozy.